Outrocast. Juan, how is your day going so far aside from having to talk to me? Oh, it's been great. It's been <laughs> busy, but it's been absolutely incredible. Is it extremely dishonorable that I didn't say Chef Juan, that I just said Juan? Do you like to be oh called Oh my God, Chef don't Juan? worry. I'm, I like actually Juan. Every time I, someone calls me Chef Juan, I'm like, please call me Juan. Sure. So It just feels better. <laughs> right. Well, working with Altos Tequila, when did you find out that that was going to be happening? Wow, that is a great question. Um, for me as a chef, especially as a pastry chef, uh, opportunities like this are just really rare, you know, like sometimes you just don't, you don't see that kind of like pairing, like to, uh, alcohol with pastry. Mm -hmm. And when I hear about this opportunity, when I was, uh, I was like, this is perfect. Like this hasn't been really seen. A lot of people don't even think about this and being able to kind of like connect uh, with altos and what they were trying, what they were trying to do and what I'm trying to do was absolutely like, kind of like everything was perfect. Everything came out this, at the perfect time. And I was just so excited because um, I was able to kind of like show people that they go, that it's a great thing that goes together, especially they come from the same place, Mexico and chocolate. It's really special in Mexico and in the Latin culture. Tequila mm -hmm. is really special in Mexico and the Latin culture. And then to finally be able to show something with them together was like, I want to be part of that. I need to be part of that. And I'm, and now I'm here. So I'm so excited. Did you have ideas in the back of your mind already for the collaboration of how you were going to pair it? Or is it once you got the gig, then you went, okay, brainstorming time. So I have used tequila and chocolate before, and I went to Mexico once to do a chocolate tour. And we did kind of like a chocolate tequila, but it wasn't more like that. Yeah, you taste the tequila, then you kind of like break down with a little bit of chocolate. So when I got the opportunity, I was just like, my brain just started like going every single direction. Oh, we mm -hmm. should do with this. Oh, we should do with this. Oh, but what about this? So, oh, but they do this and this. So I was just like trying to figure out. So I ended up having like over 10 different recipes mm -hmm. that I wanted to use, but I'm like, okay, now we need to start like breaking down to figure out which are going to be the ones that are going to be like the most like, oh, I, I definitely want to try that. Because I, I don't want it to be like, oh, I don't know if that gonna, that's going to be taste good or weird. So mm -hmm. I wanted to be like, oh, no, I need to try that. So I was like, okay, margarita. That's the first one. Mm -hmm. Second one, Paloma. Third, because they're like, I start kind of like basing myself on the recipes, on the cocktails that are really known from Mexico. And I had, and then I started playing more with tropical flavors. And then, because they have such a nice variety uh, with, the, with their tequila. So I was like, okay, how can I play this with this flavor? How can I play this with this? So I ended up coming out with different truffles for this collaboration. And this collaboration also has the TikTok dance element of it. Uh, yes. did, were you forced to experiment with some dancing or do you just leave that to the professionals? I, I leave that to the professional. <laughs> I, I, I know how to dance, but I am not that well as, as as he is he's, he's incredible so he was uh he was doing a, a great job he did a great job if I, I was like when we started collaborating when i found out that it was him um uh, i right away just texted him and i was just like right. i can't believe that i'm working just in the same project next to you this is like mind-blowing can we just please do something one day whenever you're here just please hit me up because I would love to do something with you. I need you to teach me how to dance. And then he was like, oh my God, no, I am so excited also as well. So he was like, we were both kind of like fangirling over each other. And they're like, we want to work with you. I want to work with you. So it was just, I think this is like, and this is the best way to explain why, what are we trying to do? You know, like connecting people through, through something, you know, connecting people through a product, connecting people through memories, connecting people through bringing something fun for them to do and I did, I never know I, I haven't met him and the fact that we actually connected through this it's kind of like the best way to explain and show what amazing project this is yeah Brian is a very talented person so and talented he is so talented I always I, I always tell ask him to please teach me how to spell his last name Speron and he always makes fun of me 
<laughs> well, something that you both have in common, and I'm saying this as an outsider, is both of you, your job did not really exist 10 years ago. 10 years no. ago, there was not TikTok. 10 years ago, there were food reality oriented competition shows, but it wasn't the mainstream. There wasn't really the chef approach to social media. Yeah, sure, chefs had Facebook accounts, but they weren't really demoing things that, like they are today. So I'm curious with you personally, I look at you as being very successful within the food and the digital spaces. When did you realize that it was going to be a career to be an internet savvy chef? Well, I still haven't come out to the realis realization of my kind of like new success or like fame you know what i mean i'm still like people still like people i'm walking i was like literally i just arrived yesterday from colombia mm -hmm. uh, no two days ago and then i was like i was like just walking uh and then people just scream my name i come out of the bathroom people scream my name and then i'm like just keep walking because i never think that it's me and then i'm they keep screaming one 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 and i just walk around and i'm like me yeah you <laughs> so this is like, it's been so surreal for me. And it's so true, especially as a pastry chef that I am. Pastry was always all the time seen as the last, the bottom, uh, not as yeah. important as a savory chef. You know, we know so many celebrity it, chefs. I'm sorry to interrupt you. It was like the sous chef or the pastry chef was usually That's the bottom so one. Oh my God. That's so true. I mean, I'm so happy that you see that. And, I, and I promise myself that I want to use kind of like the um, the word and the um, type of like, uh, how you said that, uh, the inspiration and the words that I can use now to inspire our people that to kind of like show people how important our job is. Because mm -hmm. what you're saying is so true. Our jobs are like pretty much based as a sous chef when we have the same title as an executive safe savory chef. So when I... Um, when everything happened and then I start seeing all of these changes, it's, uh, it's been incredible. Finally, people are being able to see what we can do and what are we capable of. And then not just that, it's just show how passionate we are for what we do. Because I, always, I have always said, pastry is about passion. Pastry mm -hmm. is about loving what you do and showing it and sharing it with everyone. But at the same time, you have to be good at math to be a pastry chef. Oh my God. Um, you do have to be good at math, but I am awful at math <laughs> so i always have to have my calculator next to me uh otherwise things are not gonna be fine but it's so true math and pastry goes extremely next to each other sure so besides this great altos collaboration are you allowed to say what else you're working on at the moment uh in terms of uh, myself i'm just working right now like with i have a lot of work like a lot of projects going on like i'm mm -hmm. just really enjoying my time teaching um really showcasing like the passion that i have for pastry and for everything else so i've been really lucky to be able to be traveling around and showcasing that to everyone around the world actually it's so weird to say that well three quick questions and i'm gonna let you go and the first one is yes you're a pastry chef people know that about you but what's your second specialty if you're cooking a non-pastry, or I'm sorry, I shouldn't say cooking. If you're preparing a non-pastry related dish, what cuisine or what dish is that usually? So I am actually, I love cooking. That's, I'm not just pastry. I, I love cooking as well. So I am more in like, I like to go more into the traditional, but also like the fancy stuff. But I am, I cannot have a dish without rice. I'm a true Latino and I have to have rice in every single thing. You can give me pasta and I need rice. <laughs> you can give me the fanciest dinner, but I need rice next to it. So I'm like you. everything with rice for me is just like I always cook something with rice. So that's kind of like the stuff that I make. I like to make. Next question I got for you. I'm a music centric person. Aside from right now, the second that we hang up, music is going back on and it's gonna be listened to all day. I hear sometimes people in the kitchen have to have music on and then other people say, no, that distracts me. Which one are you? And if you do listen to music, what is it usually that you- I with? am a both person, you know? I like when I'm doing my prep and when I'm doing everything, I like to have my, like my music on because kind of like that gives me the groove and that gives me kind of like, okay, mm -hmm. we can just enjoy. Uh, while we're doing service, uh, that I take it off because then I cannot hear the machine and then I do, do get distracted. But sometimes I leave it a little bit on. And then if I'm going to listen to music, I 
think it depends on the on how I feel that day or how fast I want to move. Oh, so, uh, yeah. So I kind of like some type of music kind of like makes me move a little bit faster. So if we if I want to kind of like have like a nice groove and just like move movement, I will go more with like a reggaeton, um, some Dua Lipa, uh, Tadri Cole. But if I want to go more like, okay, today's a chill day. Today's like, we're going to move to our, uh, at, at our time. I would put some like Mariah Carey, some Beyonce. No, actually it's Beyonce is more for like, also like some beat. Uh, <laughs> Celine Dion, we do listen to Celine Dion here a lot. And it's hilarious because this kitchen turns into like a karaoke. <laughs> um, so we have to close the kitchen door, but it's hilarious. So not heavy metal. Not heavy metal. <laughs> you never know you take a famous chef like chris santos that's a heavy metal guy and you do have your small contingent of chefs that are closet metal yeah. guys. that's true that is true i'm actually being really getting really in close with like punk rock so sometimes i've been like okay i need to hear some punk and then like boom and there is just like and people come into my kitchen and they're like is this your music and i'm like yeah and they're like wow i never thought you were someone who will be listening to this i was like yeah of course <laughs> yeah same here punk uh but last question i got for you nothing to do with your success or being in the kitchen it's do you have a tv recommendation you could pass along for someone who needs a new show to start and it's 100 percent fine if it's in spanish because let's face it netflix half the shows we watch are not in english in this household that's so true i mean i will say definitely you have to watch school of chocolate because i'm in it and it's really fun not mm -hmm. because i'm in it but it's actually a really fun show yeah and, and but if not one of my favorites is grace and frankie that's just the type of show that i just oh, yeah. watch and just enjoy and relax is that a uh, jane fonda and lily yes it's jane fonda yeah now She's i know incredible. yeah but so definitely I've... chocolate <laughs> well, I, I get a lot of the chocolate in this household because my, my wife used to run stores for La Maison du Chocolat, but okay. we'll pay attention to that one. But what I've learned about you is great taste in the kitchen, in music, television, et cetera. So really looking forward to whatever's to come from you in the near future, Juan. Uh, thank you so much. I'm really excited too. And this is going to be, I just can't wait for people to really see everything that we're doing and really connect everyone with Altos Juntos and just creating memories. You know, that's the most important thing about this is just creating memories that we're going to be talking about it and just enjoying time. Just this is summer. Summer is happening and we need to start like figure out other things to just being outside. And this is perfect timing for that. Outrocast.